So maybe you've learned how to pronounce all of the consonants and vowels, including diphthongs, according to the rules of classical Latin as best we know them. I've got a couple of my earliest videos, but please don't judge. That can give you a good refresher on this, just in case. But there, that's not all that there is to proper pronunciation. So let's take this word. Do you pronounce it like amicus or amicus? So that first syllable, is it a or am? This video will cover the rules of proper syllabification, that is the process of making syllables. And this might seem a bit pedantic, but this is very important for proper pronunciation of Latin, and it does play a role in how Latin poetry sounds and is structured. Oh, and speaking of sound, I'm going to butcher some Latin words here and likely overdo my pronunciation to make a point of how these syllables work. Again, don't judge. So a syllable is a segment of a word that consists of, essentially, one beat. Each syllable contains a single vowel sound, whether it's a short or a long vowel, or even a diphthong, like the I or ow. I like to think of a syllable like a sandwich. The vowel is the middle part, the meat, or the peanut butter. That part is essential, the sine qua non of the syllable. And you can't have a syllable without a vowel sound. Consonants are like the bread, though. Sometimes you have consonants beginning or ending a syllable, like an open-faced sandwich, and sometimes you have consonants on both ends, like a traditional sandwich. Oh, and sometimes you raid the fridge and just eat the salami by itself. Shh, don't tell anyone. In my analogy, this is like a plain vowel all by itself. Grammarians call syllables that end in a consonant closed, and those that don't open. So if this is our Latin word, properly syllabified, and I'll get to the rules later, puer, the first syllable is open, while the second syllable is closed. So if we bring back our Latin word, amicus, we can figure out just by saying it, or even counting the vowel sounds, that this word has three syllables, or three beats. Great. But what about this M? Is it part of the first syllable, or the second? since it sits right in between the first or second syllable. Now it's rules time. So here's the first rule of syllabification. A consonant would rather begin a syllable than end it. So this M, since it can either end the first syllable or begin the second, would rather be with the I. And this C begins the third syllable instead of ending the second. The S has no choice, so it has to end the third syllable. So here's our word in all of its syllabic glory, amicus. Not amicus, but amicus. And I apologize for overstressing each syllable. But what about this word, captus? It's disyllabic, which means it has two syllables, each centered around its vowel, both the A and the U. But where do the consonants belong? Well, the C and the S are pretty obvious with the first and second syllables, respectively. But we have two consonants in the middle between the syllables, so this leads us to the second rule of syllabification. When you have two consonants together like this, the first one ends the previous syllable, while the second one begins the next one. So we split the two consonants down the middle. The T really wants to begin the second syllable, which means that the P has to end the first syllable. So here we go. Coptus. What about Wila? Like Coptus, this is a disyllabic word around its two vowels, but we could have a problem. So for many of us native English speakers, especially American English speakers, it's very tempting to pronounce this word like this, we la. But that contradicts our second rule with a two consonants in a row. The first one goes with the preceding syllable and the second one with the following one. So there's actually an L at the end of the first syllable. This word is pronounced we la. I mean, really, if the Romans pronounced this we la, they would have spelled it with just one L. Instead, it's we la. Those two rules will work for most Latin words, but there are a few exceptions. So in Latin, and in English, by the way, there are such a thing as consonant groups. So two or more consonants that are pronounced together with a distinctive sound. So think of the word black in English. The BL gives us the BL sound, while the CK gives the K sound. These are two consonant groups. Black is monosyllabic. That is, it has one syllable. And that syllable begins with the BL group and ends with the K 
group. So let's take a Latin word like flos. This too is monosyllabic, but the fl functions as a consonant group. We don't separate these two consonants up, but we keep them together. In the word alacris, the CR is a consonant group and forms the cr sound. So these two consonants together begin the third syllable, a la cris. Often this will happen if the second consonant is an L, like in flos, or an R, like in a la cris. These consonants, the L and the R, are called liquids. Think of them as fluid, like how your tongue flows when you pronounce them. However, you'll also see other consonants involved in a consonant group like st, st, as in stare, or sp, sp, as in spuere, but usually just at the beginning of words. X and Z also give problems, though, since these are actually double consonants and should be split up by rule. The X is really a C and S sound put together, so dixit. D-I-X-I-T, is really something more like dixit, D-I-C-S-I-T. Ah, if we spell it like this, it's relatively easy to divide it up, dixit. But with the X, though, well, some people put the X with the first syllable, others with the second, even though it's impossible to accurately represent the true pronunciation of this word. You really want to split the X right down the middle. The Z is really a D and S put together, so the name Metzentius, Metz, is really Medzentius. And the D goes with the first syllable, and you can really hear it when you say it, Metzentius. Now, when we compound words, like with a prefix, the different parts are separated, so ab est is really the prefix ab with est, and so we separate like this. Perago is the prefix per, which means through, and the verb ago. So we separate off the prefix per and start the second syllable with an a. Per a go. And finally, beware of Latin's peculiar letters, like an i, followed by a vowel at the beginning of a word, is a consonant. Iacchio has three syllables, not four, since the first i is a consonant, and it turns into a j in many modern languages, including English. Eject derives from this word. Also, U, when it's followed by a Q, is part of the consonant. Quairo has just two syllables. And this sometimes holds for U following an S or a G, like suavis customarily has two syllables, not three. And sanguis also has two syllables, not three. And some texts replace all Vs with Us just to make things even more difficult. So if your text does this, you'll see suavis like this, or Caesar's famous quote, "Wainy, weedy, weaky, looking a bit strange. Okay, so a quick review before some practice words. One, a Latin word has as many syllables as it has vowels and diphthongs. Two, a consonant will begin a syllable if at all possible. Three, in the case of two consonants or double consonants, so a doubled letter like a double L in we, la, the first consonant ends the first syllable and the second one begins the next syllable. You split them up. Four, but beware of exceptions, like consonant groups, especially where the second consonant is an L or an R, and the X and the Z, which really represent two different consonants. Oh, and compound words too. And five, beware of consonantal I's in situations where U is part of a Q, G, or S. So now to practice. Here are nine words, and pause the video, write them down, and try to syllabify them. Then start the video back up again and see how many you get right. So we start with the easy one. Est has one vowel, so it's one syllable. Yam looks like it should have two syllables, but that I is actually a consonant, so it begins the word and is followed by a vowel. So yam, too, just has one syllable. Arma has two syllables and two consonants in between them, so we split them up like this. Puela has three syllables. The UE is not a diphthong, so our first syllable is pu, followed by L, and then la. The double L shouldn't cause you too much problems. Just split them up. Animus is like amicus, three syllables, animus. 
Konderet should be relatively simple too. The N and the D are split up, and the R begins the final syllable. Konderet. Kausas has the diphthong AU, pronounced AU. So even though there are three vowels, there are only two syllables. Kausas. De skenderat has a prefix de, which itself forms the first syllable. And this prefix allows us to break one of our standard rules, and the rest follows convention. De sken de rat. And finally, we have dextra, with the x and the tr. So let's follow convention and split the syllable between the x and the t. And here the r is rolled into the t sound but we really should replace the X with a C and S and get Dijkstra.